In this video, we'll explore how a 50-year-old technology born out of Cold War era needs for stealth and resilience is now shaping the future of flight with innovations like Jet of Terror. Back in the 1960s, NASA began experimenting with fluidic components. These were devices that used streams of air or liquid to control aircraft systems. Unlike traditional mechanical or electronic parts, these had no moving parts, making them more reliable and resistant to wear. And because they weren't electronic, they were also immune to electromagnetic pulses or EMPs, a key advantage during the Cold War. Since then, technological advances have taken fluidics beyond internal control systems and into the realm of external flow and propulsion, opening up new possibilities for how we power and control aircraft. For over 100 years, the sound of roaring engines and spinning propellers has been the signature of airplanes. But behind the scenes, a quieter kind of technology is starting to take shape. It's called fluidics propulsion, and it could lead to aircraft that are lighter, simpler, and even stealthier. Instead of relying on traditional mechanical parts like flaps, rudders, or turbines, Fluidics uses streams of air or liquid to steer and power planes. Think of it like controlling a plane by blowing air in the right direction at the right time. No moving parts needed. This isn't just science fiction. From NASA to DARPA to companies like Jet of Terra, real progress is being made. So how does fluidics work? At its core, fluidics is all about guiding the flow of fluids like air or gas through specially shaped pathways to control how the aircraft moves. Rather than using motor or hinges, fluidics takes the advantage of physical effects like the Quanda effect where a stream of fluid of air tends to stick to a surface or vortices to steer the aircraft. But it can do even more, as we will explore later in this video. It was NASA that got the ball rolling in fluidics technology. NASA had been exploring fluidics for decades. Back in the day, they looked at how fluidics could simplify a small aircraft by replacing heavy sensors and mechanical systems with lightweight air-based components. Later, during the height of the Cold War, fluidics was advanced out of the need to make a non-electric control technology capable of stabilizing modern high-performing fighter aircraft. It was immune to all kinds of electromagnetic interference, including foreseeable directed energy threats at the time. Their research laid the foundations for what's happening today, even if the tech hasn't yet taken over commercial aviation. Fluidics then made its way to the UK. One of the coolest examples of fluidics in action came in the form of BAE systems, which built an experimental drone called Demon. Instead of using flaps and rudders, Demon controlled its flight using high-pressure air blown over parts of its wings. It flew successfully in 2010, proving that it's possible to steer a plane with just airflow, no traditional moving parts required. Fewer parts meant a smoother shape and potentially better stealth. Let's now look at what is happening in the world of fluidics today. DARPA, the US military's advanced research agency, is pushing fluidics even further with a project called Crane. Their goal is to build a new type of aircraft that uses air jets for all its flight controls. The term they have used is active flow controls. By carefully blowing or sucking air at different spots on the wings, the project crane aims to control the plane's movement while reducing drag and possibly improving fuel efficiency. It's a bold experiment that could change how future aircraft are designed. News has also come out that China is taking an interest in this technology. Although details are hard to come by, there are signs that China is exploring fluidics, especially for stealth drones. The idea is that without moving parts to reflect radar, these aircraft could be much harder to detect. It's still unclear how far along they are, but it shows that the interest in this tech is truly global. And finally, we have Jet Optera that is using fluidics for rethinking jet engines. Jet Optera is taking a different approach. Their systems don't use traditional engines or propellers. Instead, they push air through specially shaped nozzles to create thrust, a concept called circulation control. 
and they're not using the quanta effect from the fluid jets for controlling aircraft direction. They are using it for entraining more air and thereby increasing the thrust. Jet Optera has no moving parts on the outside. It is claimed to be quieter than regular engines and could be perfect for urban air taxis or other aircraft that need to fly in and out of small spaces with minimal noise. So what's holding Fluidix back? Like any new technology, Fluidix still faces challenges. Engineers need to make sure that these systems can handle real-world flying conditions. They also need to improve energy efficiency and figure out how to integrate Fluidix with today's digital flight controls. But the potential is huge. Planes that are lighter, quieter, and stealthier could change how we think about aviation. From early NASA research to BAE's flying prototype, DARPA's ambitious design, and Jet Optera's quiet engines, Fluidix is slowly but surely reshaping the future of flight. And with this, the video is concluded. Our website is now online. You will find all the information presented herein in the link below. If you learned something from this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.